Welcome back to part two of this lesson where we learn how to find the voltage, current, and power for each resistor in this circuit. In part one, we ended off combining these resistors so that it was represented as one resistor and the power source of 120 volts. The circuit ended up looking like this. And not only did we calculate the resistance of this resistor, but we also found out the current and it was 7.3 amperes. In part two, our goal is to find the individual voltage, current, and power that is going through each of these resistors. So we've yet to fill in this table, and that's what we'll be doing in this part. Now before we start doing anything, I want to go over two important laws that will help us along the way. The first one being the current law, which states that the sum of the currents flowing into any node is equal to the sum of current flowing out. So we know that there is 7.3 amperes flowing in this direction into that initial node and the same amount of current should be flowing out of this node back to the battery back to the power source so that's what the current law tells us in addition the voltage law says that in a closed loop the sum of the voltage that drops across a resistor must be the same as the voltage source applied to that circuit. So let's apply these two laws to where we ended off in that last video. This resistor right here, we called it R sub D, and it was a combination of RC and RB. RC is this part right here, and as you can tell, it is a combination of R1 and R2. So what I will do is use the fact that RC has a resistance of 46.7 ohms and calculate the current that's flowing through RC, a combination of R1 and R2. And then from there I can find out individually what R1 and R2 is. In case that's confusing to you, let me show you what I mean. So we have V is equal to IR, that's called Ohm's law. And in part one we found out that RC had a resistance of 46.7. So I'll place that value in for R. We don't know the current that's flowing through RC, so we need to find that first. And the voltage is 120 that's provided in the question. So dividing both sides by 46.7, this is some basic algebra, we should end up with the current. 120 divided by 46.7 and that gives us roughly 2.569 2.569 amperes. Remember RC consists of R1 and R2 so if we go back to R1 and R2 their resistance is provided so if we look at R1 specifically and again we use Ohm's law the current as we found out for RC is 2.569. We'll multiply that by the resistance of R1 being 35.3. 35.3. So we'll take the value that's on our screen and multiply it by 35.3. And this will give us the voltage at R1 and it's 90.7 volts. So I'll go ahead and write that into this chart 90.7 volts, the current being 2.569, which roughly translates to 2.6. Multiplying these two out will give you the power, which equates to roughly 233. So I wrote down 2.6 here. You can write down 2.569 if you prefer, but moving forward, I'll be rounding to one decimal place as I represent these values. All right, so those are the values for R1. Remember, R1 and R2 were in series. So the current for R2 will also be 2.569. So R2, V is equal to IR. Again, 2.569 is the current flowing down. And the resistance for R2 is 11.4. 11.4. Let's go ahead and multiply these out. 2.569 times 11.4 is 29.28. 29.28. If you notice something, that adding 90.7 and 29.28 should give you roughly 120 volts. 
So that's something to keep in mind in reference to the law that we spoke of earlier. Okay, so let me write that down. We have 29.3, 29.3. The current again is 2.569, which I'll round to 2.6. And let's go multiply this out. So the number on our screen times 2.569 gives us 75.2. 75.2 is the power across resistor 2. Now, let's go back to what we had written earlier. We said that RD consists of RC, and we're done with RC, that was R1 and R2, and RB. So, what I will do from here is find out information about RB. Because RB, if you look back, is composed of R3, this one, and a combination of two resistors that were in parallel represented as RA. Let's worry about RB first and then from there get information about R3. All right, looking back at what we did in part one, we found that the resistance of RB is 25.5. So V is equal to IR, the voltage is 120, the resistance is 25.5, multiply to I, dividing both sides by 25.5, we get our current. So 120 divided by 25.5 makes a current of 4.7, 4.7 amperes. All right, we'll use this information now to find out what we need to know about R3, okay? Because R3 and RA is what makes up RB. I'll write down the information here. So R3, we have V is equal to IR, again, Ohm's law. The resistance of R3 is 13.8, 13.8, and we will multiply that to 4.7. So multiplying these out should give us the voltage at R3, 4.7 times 13.8, and that is equal to 64.86. 64.86 is roughly 64.9 volts. Okay, let's go write that in. 64.9 into the chart. The current is 4.7, and multiplying these two values gives you the power. So 64.9 times 4.7 gives us 300 and 4.8. You may also round this to 305 if you like. Now that we're done with R3, remember that as the current was flowing through this resistor, there was a voltage drop across that resistor. The volts at R3 were 64.9. So to find out the voltage after the resistor, you take 120, which is what you started with, and subtract it from 64.9. That will give you the total volts after the current has passed this resistor. So 120 minus 64.9 gives us 55.1. 55.1. So that's the voltage that we will be using moving forward. If we want to calculate the current at R4, using Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, we have to use the resistance for R4 being 28.3. So I'll write down 28.3. And we don't know the current, but the voltage is 55.1. That's getting a little messy, so let me just transfer that information over here. Dividing both sides by 28.3, we end up with a current that is 1.3. 946. 1.946. We'll round that in a moment. In fact, we'll just round it to 1.95. And the voltage we found to be 55.1. Multiplying these out, let's go ahead and do that. Multiply this by 55.1 should give us a value of roughly 107 as the power. The voltage across this resistor will also be 55.1. So all we have to do is that exact same calculation to find the current. 
where we take 55.1 and divide it by 20. And we get a current of 2.75, 2.76 rounded up. And multiplying these to get the power, 55.1 times 2.76 is 152. That is how to decode each of these resistors and find out the voltage, current, and power as the current flows through this circuit. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below or use our website at biology-forms.com. Thank you for watching.